debating with indifference. Who has heard of debating? Hands up. Taking challenging pupils from six inner city schools and unlocking their potential in a unique competition. You're scared to me. Go away. Specially trained mentors now have 10 weeks to help these children find their voices. On the count of three, one, two, three. When you tease out some of their opinions and try and make them more confident, you know that you've helped them bridge that gap between the person they were when they stepped into the classroom and the person they were when they left. And turn them into confident debate champions. It just seems like nobody cares what I think. When well, you're looking at one person that does right here. If they actually discover that somebody else believes in them, this process could definitely change their lives. Ready for the ultimate test, where all six schools compete at the prestigious Oxford Union. Come on, guys. Come on. They're children, they don't have to know about this yet. Then you are absolutely wrong. If it's an argument, and it's worth arguing for, I'm not going to give up. Only the best schools will reach the finals at Britain's toughest debating chamber, the Houses of Parliament. The winner of the Artemis Debate Mate Cup is... Three miles from Manchester city centre is State School Stretford High. Morning. Morning, guys. Off your back, please, son. It's a diverse school of 800 boys and girls located in a tough area of the city. As soon as we step through down gates, no trainers, please, love. <laughs> the 120 students are looked after by head of year nine, Miss Byrne. Right, you lot, enjoy your next lesson. Oh, my God, stop it! They're at that awkward stage where they're in the middle of the teens almost and they're they're growing up and they're maturing and they're not sure about themselves, they're confused. Why would somebody think that? They're shy and they don't want to do it because everyone's looking at you and it's really scary. Yeah. Oh they have drama coming out of their ears and it's 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 all about that. That's not funny. They're definitely difficult. I've ripped my tights. They're gonna ladder. There's always drama going on. Every day someone's kicking off or someone's gone behind someone's back or someone's cheating on someone. It's like there's not a day where there's none of it. No. The school hope 20-year-old debate mate mentor Addy can unlock the potential of their more demanding pupils. Debating definitely empowers students and uh, lets them know this that you know they have stuff to say, their opinion is important. Fifteen challenging students have been handpicked by the school to learn how to debate. In just ten weeks, Addy must choose five pupils to represent the school in a competitive debate at the Oxford Union. You definitely get slightly nervous, slightly apprehensive before your first session, just because you've never seen these students before. This will be the first time these students have ever debated. How are we feeling today? Good. Good. I don't like winter. <laughs> this will happen. You live in Manchester, so the weather isn't the best. All right, all right. Guys, shh. I'd like to welcome everyone to the first Debate Mate session. My name is Ade, and I'm going to be your mentor for the coming weeks. Uh, what we're going to try to do is build some teamwork and confidence in this classroom through debating, OK? That's what we're looking to do. I come here for the bananas. <laughs> Despite Ade's best efforts, 13-year-old Ellie and her friends aren't taking the club seriously. Becca, my hand's going purple. My hand's going purple. <laughs> Everyone quiet, we're going to listen to this last point, quiet. Shh. Guys, quiet, quiet. OK. What do we think arguments are, first of all? Ellie? Um, <laughs> I'm in a crisis. What, because of your hand? <laughs> OK, so we're going to start again. Ellie's constant acting up is affecting some of the quieter members of the group, like 13-year-old Imani. Um, um, it's like one person disagreeing, one good person agreeing. Absolutely, exactly, exactly. Um, I think lots of worries go through my head because, like, what if I don't, what, what if I stumble, and what if I stutter, and what if I'm saying erm um, a lot, like I do, I say erm, um, like, after everything, and... What if I get something wrong? What if I've not picked up the information and stuff? So, yeah. 
on today's performance, this is one of the most challenging groups I've, I've taught. <laughs> Ellie is the character that has, you know, fiery aggression about her. Like a cat. Shut up! You know, that's not necessarily something you can coach. And you do sort of need that sort of character. I want them to be confident, that's, that's key here. But, um, you know, if you're a quiet student, you might feel like the class is leaving you behind, you know. Imani's shyness makes school a struggle. It's about experimenting on taking risks and not being afraid of something going wrong. I get, like, shy and I get, like, scared to talk to people. Is anyone really stuck at the moment? Imani, all right, I'll see you first. I hide behind everyone else. How are you doing? I'm, bit, I'm struggling. <laughs> Why? Because I can't get it right. Miss Roban has taught Amani for the last three years. I think it's quite common as uh, teenagers often doubt themselves an awful lot. I think Amani more so than most. I think you're being too hard on yourself. And I think you're beating yourself up all the time. And all the time while you're doing something, you're saying, oh, it's not good. You just need to believe in yourself a little bit more. Imani is close with her cousin Jade and lives at home with her mum, Valerie. Come on. How's it going then? Tell me all about it. It was all right, yeah, it was good. Did well, I tell me all about it. What yeah. did you talk about? Um, being able to talk, like, public speaking. It's scary. We have to go step over them scare barriers and go for them. We don't understand, though. We don't understand. Well, of course we do, because I get shy and barrier well, I used to. Yeah. Well, and this will help. She'll say something, and if you say something to her that will even slightly, she'll think it's a put down, she'll get upset about it. So she just gets there barriers. I think she thinks that she can't do certain things and she can do it. And she has that lack of confidence, but I don't know why. Mum, just give me a chance because you yeah, don't understand I how do annoying it, all the time, it is. I have to talk to someone who I don't if know. I do it all the time, and that don't, doesn't make any sense because you won't get you the confidence know. to do it. I know, I know, I know. So I have to put you in at the deep end. I know, I know. It's well, just... you won't do it otherwise. What's holding me back is um, myself. Medium. If I don't find the confidence soon, I won't be taken seriously at all. And I want to be taken seriously. But it's really scary. Yeah. Morning. Morning, Rio. Rio, occupy, please, son. Rio. Good morning. Stop there a second. I know we have a conversation about them every time. It's two weeks into term at Stretford High. Guys, are we ready? Mentor Addy's debating sessions are in full swing. When you start your speech, you have to be hooking people in. You have to be believable. And that is all to do with style. Only five students can make the final team. Over the next few weeks, Addy must assess their ability. Agree? Disagree. Our side thinks that your parents should be held responsible for your criminal activity because they should have brought you up knowing not to do that sort of thing. When you're a child, things could be hard financially or in the environment that you're in. Parents should imply good values into the children from an early age to stop them from growing up into a life of crime. Some speakers are more confident than others. Um, I think parents should be held responsible for your crimes because, um, it's hard. All right, what do we know by the term POI? Points of information. This allows a debater to disagree with a rival's point. One, two, three. That was terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> Despite some progress, the louder students continue to make it difficult for the quieter ones. I hope they calm down and listen to everyone else's feelings because not everyone likes how they're loud and annoying. <laughs> I came here because I wanted to learn something. When they're like shouting, they're ruining the lesson. Hamid, what's up? Are you all right there? Hamid sometimes would like to uh, sit uh, separate from the rest of the group uh, to distance himself. It's important for me that Mohammed integrates into the group and you know, that he's having trouble is a problem. Um, that we, we have to look into solving. Can I pull you in quickly? Just a bit, just a bit. <laughs> All right, shh. I want the people that are at the club to, like, talk with me 
but they don't really do that. I felt like the left one out. I, fe I felt like I was the one, like the odd one out, because I don't really feel confident talking to them. I kind of feel like jealous because like everyone's got the talking with each other, and I'm just there sitting down by myself. How are you right there? You good? All right. And then I felt like all my days, who's going to talk with me? Who am I going to be with? And I had no one to walk with home as well. Head of year Miss Byrne is also worried about Mohammed. I don't want you feeling miserable and I don't want you feeling bad. But then what's the point of doing if I don't have anyone that talks to me? But that, that's our target. And maybe this is actually a really good thing for you to make friends with the other kids in there. I don't think that's going to happen. But why? We can't just go through life having one or two friends or just a small group of friends. We can't do that. Because when you go into a workplace, there might be people you don't like there. And that's like school. You've been put in this club because of how brilliant your potential is. I don't want you regretting that you pulled out of it or that you didn't give it your all. We're just going to be open to the possibility of speaking to other people in the club. OK? It's like, they've not been in that situation where, I don't think they have, where, they've, where they're by themselves and they don't have anyone to talk to. But trust me, when, you get, when, you, when you're by yourself, then you'll, like, you'll feel upset and you'll feel like going. I had no idea how he was feeling. I didn't realise he felt so alone and so down in the dumps and, and so isolated from everybody else. I would love the club just to bring him out of himself to, you know, to help him make new friends and to learn some social skills and to just to help him be a happier person because he's very, very lost at the minute. It's week four and Addy is determined to break up the cliques and mix the group. We know that they're going to need to be able to work with each other in teams with people they're not necessarily friends with outside the club. That's where the difficulty lies and it's a very simple solution is properly mix them up. Even the ones, you know, who don't talk to each other usually. <laughs> Two of the more challenging members of the group are best friends, Rebecca and Ellie. Guys, can I ask a favour of you? To focus on the work at hand, as opposed to your phones. Deal? Deal? Yeah? Are we going to shake on it? Can we do a three-way shake? Are you just, are you just going to hug each other? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that also works. <laughs> They're best friends. Um, they won't be necessarily with each other in the next segment. They'll be split up, so... It'll be a bit different. Um, see how they react to that. To know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully well. All right then, guys. If I need you all to get up, we've got teams. Can't we Hilton. choose our teams? Everyone up. Everyone up. Stand up. Oh. All right. Group one is with Ellie, Hilton, Mohammed, and Kamal. <laughs> I guess. Come over here. Come over here, guys. They can't do that. Come over here, Ellie. Come Ellie. Ellie, you have, to, you have to let go. I don't like them people. Let's go, let's go. She's not in our group. She's, she's in your group. She's no, Ellie's group. not in our group. Oh, Ellie's in your group. Please, no, I don't get along with you. These are your group, guys. I'm, I'm not coming again. I'm not coming again. Don't no, wait. It's only your opportunity. Only your opportunity. You're wasting no one else's. Just no. Nope. Oh. Shut up. Oh. Shut up. Oh. Was anyone talking to you now? No, no. I'm not doing it. Now, now I want you all to take... Oh. I want you all to claim a group of chairs, OK? Claim a group of chairs. So get, get a group of three. Get, it doesn't matter. Get a group of three chairs and sit we together. You would work with her, but she don't want to work with us. Yes, yeah, fine, fine. Get, get a group of three chairs, sit together. <laughs> you are Ellie. I don't feel comfortable in that group then. Before. Why not? Because I don't get along with them at all. The thing is, Ellie, about debating is you, you have to mix, and that's just something you have to do in life. You have yeah, to be I'm able to work about, with other people. I'm not bothered about that. It's just I don't. I'm not even going to be in a group where I'm not comfortable. Do you not think you can do this exercise for five minutes for me? No. No? No. Absolutely not? Absolutely not. But everyone else has been, like, given their teams, and it wouldn't be fair if I just gave you a different team, Eddie. No. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, no. I said I'm not, and I'm I not. I think you can do it. No. Oh, my gosh. No, I am not going to be in a group with them people. I have said that. Right, I'll tell you. It just sounds no. like you're not friends with anyone. You're just not. 
Not for all, oh, wow. You're, like, it sounds like you're just, nah, you, you don't I'm like anyone in, in the class. Nah, I'm not in the mood to just said that. Yo, I'm not in the mood today. Where are you going, Ellie? Fast. Where? Ellie? <laughs> She's literally just walked off, which is uh, kind of shocking. Um, I feel like Ellie has to learn not to just walk out whenever she can't work with someone, you know? She, she can't just do that in every situation, that's not the answer. She's gonna have to work with other people, not just in debating, just in life. My worry for Ellie is that she's just gonna go completely off the rails. It's very tough for her at the minute. Ellie has got a lot of responsibilities at home. Um, Mum is often not very well. Hi, Hi baby. Hi, yeah, you're all right. I was scared. So Ellie right. takes on that care and motherly role at home with her younger sisters. Have you been really good at school today? Have you? You've been really good. My mum's got MS, so I've suspected MS fibromyalgia, and um, it affects her muscles and her brain. It makes her tired really easily. I get myself getting poorly. I had a lot of pressure on her. Where does this Barbie go? She did have quite a lot on her plate with looking after the children and helping look after me because I would become quite ill sometimes. Oh, cheers, Al. It's a kiss. Love you. Love you. So, she's everything. Like, my mum's my mum. Like, I always say, like, because I went through this phase where I was running away a lot and that was making her worse. And like, I thought about it and she's my mum. And like, I shouldn't do stuff like that. Like, she's been there for me for everything. I do worry, I worry she'll go down the wrong road sometimes. She's quite vulnerable sometimes, Ellie. She's not as confident as she makes out. Yeah, with me being ill, I just feel like she's, she's a bit fragile more than some. I just want to make her feel like I've grown up well and she's brought me up good enough. And... Yeah, I know it can be bad, but I don't mean to. I just, like, flip out sometimes. She's, just, she's, she's a good, really good girl deep down. She just needs to channel things in the right way. It's hard. I just want to make her, like, know that I can do stuff and, like, that I'm not letting her down and stuff. Excellent. It's halfway through term at Stretford High. Morning, 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 morning. Nobody says morning back these days, Timmy. What's the world coming to? It's been a week since Ellie stormed out of debate club. Addy has set up a meeting to try and resolve her issues with the group. I'm sorry for like being so off task. Okay. I got disappointed in myself because I know that I could do so much better than that. Yeah, that's why yeah. I got angry. Like... I know you can do so much better as well. So, uh, but you know that's okay. You need to be at the top of your game, and anything less than that won't be enough. I'll just be fo I think I'll be more focused then. You just uh, have to be able to learn from it. Sometimes I just react badly and like I overreact. People think I'm loud and stuff, but that's sometimes just a cover up when I'm scared and like don't know what's going on. I sort of just act like, yeah, I don't care when really I really do. She can learn from this. Um, and I think we've got a far more mature Ellie now than we had at the beginning. Um, and it's a, a waiting game really to see to see how she fares. There are now four weeks until Addy picks his debating team. How's it going, you right? Following his meeting with Ellie, he's hoping the whole group's attitude will improve. But Mohammed is still struggling to integrate with the group. There is the possibility that we lose Mohammed, you know, because he is quite isolated at the moment, and so it's quite a precarious position. It's a case of trying to find a way in which Mohammed can be a, a big part of the classroom. Today I want to do a debate. To help okay. motivate Mohammed, Adi has selected him to be one of today's key speakers. Guys, today I want to do our first debate, okay? And in teams, okay, we'll have Mohammed. Yeah, I'll be Okay, Kamal. Yeah, okay, Brittany as well, okay. And then, all right, we'll have Siddiqui and Imani and Ellie. This is your team for the day. You're gonna, you have to get used to it. And you guys <laughs> sit on one table, you guys sit on the other. Okay, the motion before the house today is this house would bring back the death penalty. Listen, guys, you get 15 minutes to prepare your case. Make sure you talk to each other so you know what your partners are saying and that sort of thing. This house would bring back the death penalty due to the fact that lots of 
Trust your judgment, guys. Trust your judgment. I've got a good idea. <laughs> Equally. All right, everyone, take your positions, please. First to speak is Ellie. This house will bring back the death penalty due to the fact that over the years lots of people are getting away with criminal activities and they're not getting sentenced to jail for long enough. Two wrongs don't make a right. The person who committed the crime has a family as well. If a life is taken, another life should be taken too. Um, Private information. Nope. <laughs> it should be taken too. Mm. Now part of a team, Mohammed has his chance. Mohammed. You're going to smash it anyway, you're going to smash it. Why we should not be allowed to allow the penalty being brought into England. Right, so if you bring back the death penalty, then save the person who is going to get it is a man and he is a father. How will he provide his family with food and shelter? The family not only financially will be broken, but mentally will be torn apart. If a person kills another for stealing his cookie, at court he will end up saying, if you can do it, so can I. We shouldn't bring it back because the population will go down, there won't be any people to do the jobs. The law is going to be broken every single day, so numerous amount of people Point will be nation. given death penalty every day. Round of applause, guys, come on. For him to have the confidence to say, look, this is my speech, that's fantastic. He is uh, too good a speaker to be lost because he, he you know, can't make friends. So it was the first time that I was like chosen to take part and I was chosen to represent my team. And I think I made my team proud. Yeah. Make a statement, make me want to listen to you, yeah? Over the coming weeks, Mohammed's confidence continues to grow. So me and my team, we believe compulsory military or community services should be allowed. So if you never had them, then tell me who will protect you. Give him a round of applause. Yo, you guys just got sat down, mate. <laughs> Watching your speech today and over the past few weeks, I, I you know, have to say I'm really happy with how you've progressed. Um, your speeches have just got better uh, and you've been more, more involved and more, you know, taken part much more. It's like, gradually I've been like, I've been coming to the lessons and I've been learning more stuff and it's been more fun as well. Yeah, from my point of view, I think that's a very good thing. Um, so, so well done. At the start, I didn't really want to talk to anybody and I was just by myself, but now I can like share ideas with them and they can do the same with me. Head of year Miss Byrne has also noticed a change in Mohammed. He's in such a better mood, he's, he's so much happier. There's some people here that he, he probably wouldn't speak to normally. He doesn't seem to have the weight of the world on his shoulders anymore, which is lovely. <laughs> I've like gained more confidence in myself. So now I can like, I can. In class, I'm with, with people I don't really know. I can still give my point out without like hesitating. So that's quite good. And that's all part of debate, mate, because I learned that in debate, mate. I would like to call this house to order. With just one week to go and only five places available in the team, the competition intensifies. It seems like it has dawned upon the group that, you know, there's a bigger picture here. So it's a case of they have to show their true colours before it's too late. Their parents... Worth mission. I've got some good competition in it, so I need to work my game. Because I want to make it to that last, that last five. Everyone has a good chance of making the top five. Mohammed's speeches go from strength to strength. What if, like, they never, no one went to military and no one was here to protect our country? But if they don't protect our country, then all of us could get killed. <laughs> and Ellie is staying focused. Teenagers, like I said, have been known to retaliate when they're getting told what to do. What is the information? Not yet. So if you, if so, <laughs> I just want it so much. Because Addy has so much faith in me, like, I just sort of don't want to let him down. Attention or detention in two, in one. Thank you. Ellie's newfound self-control is now affecting all aspects of her school life. Miss, you know dolphins are so intelligent. A dolphin saved a human from getting eaten by a shark. That's so relevant to the Who's Titanic. Sharks are relevant to water, and water is relevant to the Titanic. There you go. That's true, that's true. That. See, I have a point there. Stop debate meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. Right we did that. Owned. However, back in the debate sessions... What would you do to make an impact on the world now? The pressure of making it into the final team is taking its toll on Imani. It's hard. I know we've been doing debate meeting for a lot of sessions now, but I still don't feel really comfortable in front of some people. To try and build Imani's self-belief, 
Adi takes her to one side. You always say clever things. Sometimes it might feel like what you're saying isn't right and that sort of thing. You might have doubts. Take my word for it, the stuff you're saying is correct. There's a time limit and everything. I've got to like fill the time limit. And when I just stop, I just, my brain goes yeah, yeah, blank. Yeah. And I have to be more confident to have less anxiety. Yeah, confidence is the most important thing when you're debating. And what I want is for you to be that confident side, the people who can say what they want to say with conviction. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll try my hardest. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imani really does now need to start believing in herself, believing she can do this. If she doesn't, you know, I can't really take her to, to be on the team. I want a place on that team so much. Like, people don't understand how much I do want to do it. Everything. I don't want to just be a follower. I want, I want, to, I want to be a leader. <laughs> It's the day of the Stretford High School final debate. Eight students have been selected to compete in a formal debate in front of their entire year group. Good morning, guys. You're all looking smart. I, I do think I'm more nervous than the kids, to be honest. Just want them to do well, that's all. <laughs> morning, ladies. Just five students can represent the school in a competitive debate at the Oxford Union. Come on, guys, let's go. As the whole of Year 9 gathers, the challenge dawns on the speakers. I'm not feeling too good now. I'm actually not feeling too good. Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. I'm scared, you know. Hopefully I don't freeze up. After 10 weeks of coaching, the students have one final chance to impress. <sighs> kind of bricking it. Must be able to prove to people that I'm not stupid and like I can speak out without arguing. I'm gonna have to face my fears. I'm really scared. It's just, you don't know in front of all those people staring at you. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Stretford High School final debate. The motion before the House today is, this House believes that 21st century kids have never had it any better. Without further ado, I'd like to start the debate. What type of child would you rather be? One that lives in the 21st century with benefits, or one that lives back then with diseases such as the plague? People don't talk to people as much as they used to, meaning that friendships are breaking apart because everyone's either up in their room, texting or playing games. Over time, every day, the world is getting more and more advanced, new things being made. Now, they have a better chance of growing up, getting good education, like providing for their family. Now, you can be at your house texting rather than going outside and making conversation. In the past years, children have to go through a lot, like wars and killer diseases that they have to go through. I'd like to thank Siddiqui for his fine speech and would now like to invite Mohammed. It's a strong start. Go on, Mohammed, kill it. Next to speak is Mohammed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do you guys really think that we've had it all? Well, I can assure you that we haven't. We are, there are so many luxuries that have been just before the 21st century, and I'll show you why. Nowadays, we have like, lots of transport, such as like trams and buses. So like, people are just lazy, and they just get in their cars and just go, go, go to their like, destination. There wasn't that, that much like, fat people then. And now, yeah, you see like, people at home, they're playing games and they're like, call of duties and that. Wouldn't you guys say that? Thanks for listening to my speech. Boom, boom. Now just Ellie, and Imani remain. Okay. Um. There's charities now where it's raising money for people to find like cures for such things as cancers. Um. 
centre is. There's like leisure centres around the area, and there's a lot. It's a lot more easier for kids to socialise and have more fun. More information. Sit down. I said before, the youth centres. When people are socialising in the olden days, it used to be out on the street with a ball. Now there's clubs, so it's a chance for kids to do things they really like. We have things such as technology, which is like anything from iPads to phones. It's an easy way of communication with everyone. So if you move far away, you'd have an easier way of connecting with people. The music industry, it's easier now with Facebook and Twitter for music artists to be noticed. So this house feels that kids in the 21st century could have never had it better. <laughs> It's now Imani's chance to make the team. You're selling this? Okay. <laughs> um, um, children are not as safe as they used to be. Um, and kids back like eight, like in like the 1980s, children were more safer. Point of information. Yeah. You said that kids are not safer now. Now youth clubs have been created so that it's an area where kids can go with their friends to socialise, but they're not on the streets. Um, um, you said that the streets are, you said the streets are safer, but back in the 1980s, kids used to be able to play on the street and not, not get kidnapped, but nowadays you see on the news that a child is getting kidnapped outside of a home. Madeleine McCann was stolen in a hotel room and also child crime has gone up. Since the 1980s, there has been more crime and children going out to steal. Kids used to be able to just go in a shop, talk to the shop dealer and buy their stuff. Now there's people pressuring kids to steal from their corner shop. In the 1960s, women used to boogie their children and leave them outside of their doors. But now if a woman did this, the woman would most likely get hate because why would you leave your child outside? It's not safe anymore. Thank you for listening. Judges Miss Thomas, Miss Brindley and Addie must agree on which five students will represent the school. Can't change it now. I've done my best. Um, nervous. I'm scared. I feel quite, like, quite, quite scared because I won't be able to let like, make it. Everyone's, like, really wants to do it now. Yeah. I want to I will get in that team. After a hard-fought debate, only five students can make the team. All right then, so guys, I'd just like to say how exceptional I thought those speeches were. But though, guys, we only have five spots on the team, and so with that, I have to announce the five people who've made the team. The first person is... Come on. <laughs> The second person on our squad of five is Siddiqui. <laughs> the third person is Mohammed. <laughs> the fourth member of our squad of five is Ellie. And the final member of the squad is Iman. <laughs> Everyone has did you know, phenomenally well, and I hope that the squad of five can go to Oxford and do Stretford High proud. Thank you. I couldn't believe how well they could stand in front of all their peers and. And, and talk like that. It was amazing. Something that our school and our year group aren't going to forget. Definitely not. I feel like I'm like a chosen person. And the people, they, they start asking me, oh, you're in debate, mate, you're in debate, and I'm like, I'm like, yes, I am. Well, too. I'm so happy for you. I know what you wanted, Ellie. 
I'm really, really surprised. I really didn't think I was going, but I'm so happy now. Can I ring my mum, mate? She's going to ring, I'm going to ring yeah. my mum. Mum, guess what? I made it to the final five. That's really, really good. Ten weeks ago, I was dramatic, annoying, always the centre of an argument. But, like, now I've sort of, like, chilled out a bit and I'm just, like, thinking before I say things so I don't cause arguments. I've definitely learned that weathering the storm does uh, pay off. There are difficulties, uh, and if you can, you know, stick at it and be you know, persevere, you can come out the other end with a good result, you know. So I'm just super proud. They've all done so well, I think. Oh, <laughs> it's like an honour because I've put all my heart and soul into trying to be good this term and trying to impress people. I know I've done my best. You've been amazing. I couldn't be any prouder of you, man. Well done. The baby has helped me in a lot of ways, like, made my confidence stronger. Now you can see how good you are. Now you can see how good everybody else sees you are. Like, I've always dreamed about awards and thinking, oh, I could get one. It's just, it's really good. It's, it's really good to know that I'm acknowledged and that I'm finishing the year on a high. Next time... I don't want to do this anymore. London's Kingsford Community School. I'm a strong, opinionated person. Since when do you have to be black to be a rapper? Maybe I'm not as smart as people say I am. No one's actually confident. It's just the extent to which you're able to hide that. Did we just find I hope so. One, two, three. If you or your school would like any further information about working with debate experts, please go to sky.com slash speech. And stay with us as Glee works on gaining talented new recruits next on Sky 1 HD.